the Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that cheeky, chubby little mischief maker, who, when caught red-handed cutting the garters off his Aunt Minnie's girdle to make himself a slingshot, calmly said... So you're a bad boy, Costello. What's the idea of coming here late? The first broadcast of our new season. You're supposed to make a speech of welcome to our listeners. Uh, by the way, do you know how to make a speech? Oh, sure, I know how to make a speech. Oh, you do? Sure. Watch me. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Costello, they know they're ladies and gentlemen. I know, but it's nice to remind them of it every once in a while. <laughs> Never mind. Now, go ahead with your speech. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Now, just listen to this. All right, let me hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, take so, it easy. I'm lost, and it's the beginning of the season. Go ahead. Now, never mind. Folks. We're back again. And we're going to be on the air every Thursday night for a whole year. Oh, no, no, not that. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we just lost the listener. <laughs> All right, never mind that, Costello. Why weren't you here for rehearsal this afternoon? Where were you? Oh, I have a, my family gave me a welcome home party this afternoon. They did? Hey, did we have fun? My uncle Artie Stebbins, he drank two cups of tea and passed out cold. Now, that's ridiculous. How could a man pass out from drinking two cups of tea? This was DTT. You, <laughs> you dummy, DTT is not a beverage. It's made strictly for vermin. That's right. We made it up for everybody. Men, vermin, and children. Nah. <laughs> Never mind about that. You should... <laughs> you know, you should be... <laughs> you know, you should be very proud of the way your friends welcomed you back from your vacation, Lou. I saw big signs all over your neighborhood. Oh, sure. Welcome home, our hero, Lou Costello. We love you, Lou Costello. America's ace of the airways, Lou Costello. Yeah, but Abbott. Uh, what's oh, right? but those signs embarrass me terribly. Why should those signs embarrass you? They caught me nailing them up. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're impossible. Never mind that. Look, tell me about your trip back east. How, how did you like New York? Oh, Abbott, New York's a wonderful place. You think the so? The people there are so friendly. They are. The minute you get off the train, they grab you and they smother you with kisses. They do? Yeah. Then they take you for a ride in a the taxi. They hug and they kiss you. And Ooh. then they take you out for dinner and they buy you champagne. And then they take you for a moonlight ride in Central Park. And then they hug you and they kiss you some more. And then they send you home with a five-pound box of chocolate. Costello, did all this happen to you? No, to my sister. Uh, <laughs> Costello, I, look, please, I'm talking about you. What did you do in New York? Oh, Abbott, I met the most beautiful wave. We went together for 13 weeks. You went, you went with his wave for 13 weeks? Yeah, we just finished basic training. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's silly. The next time I see you, we're going on maneuvers. <laughs> But you talk sense, Costello. Uh, look, what does this girl do in the Navy? Is she a uh, uh, petty officer? What kind of officer? Uh, petty. Petty? Oh, sure. She petties all the time. And she likes the necky, too. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm crazy about that girl, Abbott. I can imagine. She's so sweet and delicatessen. Uh, delicatessen. Everything about her is so dainty. Uh, what's her name, Lou? Lena. Lena. Lena Genster. Lena Genster. <laughs> Is she a nice girl? Is she a nice girl, Lou? Uh, did you meet her family? Oh, sure. And what a family. Her father and mother have 37 children. 37 children? Mm -hmm. they, they must live on the other side of the tracks. With 37 children, they got to live on both sides of the tracks. <laughs> well, never mind about her family. Is Lena a pretty girl? Pretty? Mm -hmm. Abbott, do you know how Veronica Lake's cute little nose comes right to a point? Yes. Lena's head does the same thing. <laughs> uh, well, look, how about a figure? Is she uh, sylph-like? Uh, what? Is she sylph-like? Does she have a sylph-like figure? If she does, she keeps, she keeps it to herself. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. By sylph-like, I mean uh, chic. Is, is Lena chic? No, she ain't been chic since she had the mumps. No. <laughs> chic has nothing to do with, uh, with the mumps. Chic means uh, svelte. Now, is Lena chic and svelte? Oh, yeah. When Lena had the mumps, she was very chic, and her face svelte very up. <laughs> Rubbed a shower of shab on her push and the spelting vent of vein. No, no, no. What have we got, Swedish writers? Or I don't know. <laughs> you imbecile. Listen to me, imbecile. I only want to find out your girl friend, Lena, uh, what she looks like. I is she pert? That's she what? Pert, pert. Would you say she was pert? Certainly she's pert. 
She's Pert Irish and Pert Eskimo. No, no you idiot. <laughs> I'm not talking about her background. I want to know if Lena is Pert or appealing. Oh, sure. One time she got sunburned, and a Pert of her background was appealing. No, no. Look, <laughs> look Costello. I merely ask you if your girlfriend Lena is chic. When I say chic, I'm not referring to her health. Chic means Pert. Therefore, a girl uh, can be pert, and, and a pert girl can be svelte, and a svelte girl can be appealing. Oh, when you say a girl is chic, you're not referring to her health. Chic means pert, and a girl who is chic and pert is appealing. And most girls who are appealing are referred to as svelte. Therefore, a chic girl can be pert, and a pert girl can be svelte, and a svelte girl can be appealing. Now you've got it. And now, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Get him out of here. <laughs> Ah, gentlemen, a masterpiece of the ridiculous. And uh, may I make a quick jump from the ridiculous to the sublime, from the clowning to the classics, and quote a wise man named Aesop, who declared some 3,000 years ago, Experience is the best teacher. And true today, what we learn by experience means the most. And most civilians have learned a lot lately. For when the dealer said, Sorry, no camels today, because with camels it was the service first, well, they just had to smoke what they could get. You smoked more different brands during the cigarette shortage than you'd ordinarily try in a lifetime. And you learn by experience that nothing takes the place of Camel's costlier tobaccos properly aged and blended. Experience is the best teacher. And experience has taught millions of smokers to say... C-A-M-E-L-S Camel's. Today, more people want camels than ever before in the history of this famous brand. And now, here's Will Osborne and the orchestra with one of your favorite favorites, the Addison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Uh, will you, look, will you forget about your girl, Lena? You're, you're here and she's in New York. I'll never forget Lena Abbott. Uh, Do you remember the last night her and I was together? I bought a great big bag of gumdrops. Red ones for Lena and black ones for me. Red uh, gumdrops for Lena and black ones for you? Yeah, we sat on a bench in the park eating them gumdrops. Then it got dark and I lit a lantern. You jerk, you mean you were sitting on a bench with a beautiful girl at night and you lit a lantern? Yeah. Why? It was so dark I couldn't tell the red gumdrops from the black ones. <laughs> Costello, is that somebody at the door? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I beg your pardon, gentlemen. I'm looking for Mr. Ab. Mr. Ab. For Mr. Ab. Mr. Abbott? No, Costello. I'm Lou Costello. What do you want? Well, I got a telegram for you, and it's from Chicago. It's Chicago. It's from Chicago. Chicago? Brooklyn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where did they dig this hiccup? Uh, here, boy, give me that telegram, please. Costello. Yeah. The boy has his hand out. What do you want me to do? Read his palm? No, 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 no. 
He's, he's waiting for you to lay a little uh, gratuity in his hand. Lay a gratuity? Yeah. If he'll settle for an egg, I think I can make it. <laughs> well, that's all right. My company won't allow me to accept t- 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 money, no tips. <laughs> The telegraph company pays me very well as it is. I've only been working for them for 20 years, and yesterday they raised me. They raised you? Sure, they raised my bicycle seat up six inches. <laughs> I think he's just got a flat, that guy. You know, the only reason we keep that guy on the show is because he knows where to get bacon. Oh, never mind. Here, give me that telegram. Give me that telegram, Costell. I'll read it. Uh, let's see. Have been, have been discharged from the waves, and then... I'm on my way to Hollywood to accept the starring role that you promised me at Universal Studios. Signed, Lena Ganster. Costello. Costello, look at me. Did you promise that little girl that you would make her a star in pictures? Have it. I had to. You had to? It's the only manly thing to do. It all happened the night I boarded a bag of gumdrops. It was so romantic. Every time we reached for a gumdrop, our fingers would meet inside the sack. Then, quite by accident, I kissed her. Oh, how could you kiss her by accident? We were both chewing on the same gumdrop, and I ate half my half. You imbecile. You didn't have to promise her a starring plot in pictures just because you kissed her. That's not all I did. As what? I, I, as I was pulling away, the gumdrop snapped and bent her pivot tooth. Well, you're certainly in a mess, Costello. How are you going to get an unknown girl a starring plot in pictures? Yeah, but I thought maybe you could help me. I can't help you. I can't. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. There's a man here tonight who happens to be the world's greatest motion picture producer. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. I am Professor Melonhead. <laughs> Better known around the studio as uh, Cecil B. D. Melonhead. Melonhead? Hey, Abby, get a little of that skull. His head looks more like Nagasaki after it was hit by the atomic bomb. <laughs> Young man, don't you scoff at my cranium. I'll have you know there's plenty inside of my head. There should be. There's nothing on the outside. <laughs> Melonhead, I know how you can make a lot of money. How? Oh. Rent your head out as a skating rink for flies. Oh, now, now, Costello. Suppose my head is round and shiny. Surely you've seen things like this before. Yeah, but they all had handles on them. Oh. <laughs> Quiet, Costello, please. Hey, Professor, do you think you could advise Costello how to get his girl a starring role in pictures? Certainly, Abbott. Now, Costello, first I'll have to know something about your girl. Is she photogenic? No, she's part Irish and part Eskimo. Oh, I see. She's chic. Now... I'm not speaking of her extraction. I'm merely inquiring about her physiognomy. Her what? Her physiognomy. Does she have a smooth physiognomy? Gentlemen, don't discuss those things outside of bar rooms. <laughs> Lou Costello, you haven't got the brains of a two-year-old child. I know, but look at the difference in our ages. Oh, no. <laughs> Please, gentlemen, gentlemen, we're getting no place. Costello's girl was on her way here, and, and he made her a promise to star in pictures. Now, we've got to do something about it. Very well, Costello. I will personally groom your girl for a screen test. Melonhead, just what do you intend to do? Well, first, I will instill her with supreme confidence. I will enhance her histrionic proclivities. I will retard her basic timidity cram her repertoire with scintillating soliloquies and then with dynamic exuberance I will embellish her cinematic latitude. (laughs) You wouldn't dare. You haven't got the nerve. Oh, nonsense. Costello, I've never been so humiliated in my life. I'm ashamed to have people see me walk out of here after conversing with an imbecile like you, Mr. Abbott. Isn't there some way I can sneak out of here without being seen? Look, Melonhead, if that's the way you feel about it, you can go out this window and down our fire escape. Thank you. Open the window. Good night, gentlemen. Costello, what was that? It just dawned on me we ain't got no fire escape. Connie Haynes is back with us again this year, and we know that's a real treat for our camel audience. Connie sings, I'll Buy That Dream. Imagine me with my head on your shoulder, and you with your lips getting bolder, a sky full of moon. And a sweet mellow tune I'll buy that dream Imagine me in a 
gown white and flowery And you thanking dad for my dowry A church full of folks And those last minute jokes I'll buy that dream A honeymoon in Cairo In a brand new order gyro Then home by rocket in a wing We'll settle down near Dallas In a little plane It's not as crazy as you think Imagine me on a first and a first three With someone like you in the nursery It doesn't sound bad But if it can be songs heard round the world for this program is sent overseas to our servicemen. And I can just picture two such servicemen on their way to that magic place called home. They've been everywhere, seen everything. And now they're seeing the Statue of Liberty on the skyline they haven't seen in years. Boy, does that look good. Gosh, you never know how much you've missed something until you've had to do without it. Yes, it takes the experience of doing without to make us really appreciate things we're apt to take for granted. Proving again that experience is the best teacher. Not only in the big things, but in little things, too. Cigarettes, for instance. Most of us today have had more experience with smoking different brands than we'd usually have in a lifetime. During the shortage, we had to smoke whatever we could get. And although production was at an all-time high, the volume of demand for them made them seem to be the scarcest of the scarce. And did experience teach us that there's simply no substitute for Camel's costlier tobaccos and proper aging? It certainly did. For today, more people want Camel's than ever before in the history of the brand. Yes, as old Aesop said, experience is the best teacher. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel's, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. boy and let me in. One side or I'll open your head. Uh, shh, shh. Now, p- please, madam, quiet. The Abbott and Costello show is on the air in the studio. You must be absolutely quiet. Not a sound. You're not even supposed to breathe while they're on the air. Don't tell me they're that bad. <laughs> well, I'm going in. Step aside, hack rack, hack rack, before I hang something on your hook. <laughs> You're not getting past me, madam. I am the head usher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, pick up your head, Usher. What's going on here? Wait a minute. What is all this commotion, madam? Boy, I'm looking for the owner of the NBC network, Mr. Lou Costello. Just tell him. <laughs> you may tell him that Lena Genster is here. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, w- w- wait here just, just a minute, Miss uh, Genster. Don't, don't go away, will you please? Uh, just a minute. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Costello. Costello. What? Costello. Yeah? Uh, who do you think is here? Who? It's Lena Genster. Oh, God. That's... <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Lena Genster. You heard... Open what? the window. I'm going down the fire escape. Costello, we have no fire escape. I'll make one. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Costello. Costello, come here. Uh, did you tell uh, Lena Genster that you own the NBC network? I had to, Abbott. When did you tell her that? The night you had the gumdrops? No, that was the night we made fudge. <laughs> Stella, you idiot. First you told Lena you'd star in pictures. Then you told her you own the NBC network. 
I uh, hope you didn't tell her you were the mayor of Los Angeles. Abbott, you know, I wouldn't do that. No. I'm not that dumb. You're not that dumb. <laughs> I've had enough of this horsing around. I demand to see Senator Lucas Stella. Senator! <laughs> Senator! <laughs> Abbott, that must have been the night we pulled Taffy. <laughs> There you are, Fasso. Come here to Mama and give her a great big kiss. <laughs> All right, now put me down. <laughs> well, Bubble Nose, let's call Universal Studios and tell them the new star has arrived. We'll go right over. Go on, Costello. Get them on the phone. Hey, yeah, but what's the studio's phone number? <laughs> Get him. He owns the studio and he doesn't even know the phone number. Costello! You told her you own the studio? Oh, uh, sure. I'll own it any day now. President Bloomberg of Universal practically promised it to me. He, he promised it to you? Yeah, he said, Costello, one more picture like the last one and I'm going to give you the business. <laughs> Come on, Fatso. Jump over that last egg and let's get out of the studio. I'm ready to star in my first picture. <laughs> Costello, main gate to Universal Studios. Just think, in a few minutes, thanks to you, I'll be a star. Lena, don't you think we ought to come back some other day? The gate's locked. <laughs> There's other people getting in. Look, there goes Charles Lawton. Open the gate for Mr. Lawton, Mike. Look, there goes Charles Boyer. Open the gate for Mr. Boyer, Mike. Go on, Costello, you own the place. Tell him to open the gate for you. Good morning, sir. I'm Lou Costello. Climb over, you bum. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Why, he's treating you like a dog. Speak up. <laughs> Talk to the man. Show him you're the boss. Okay. Hey, you. Did you tell me to climb over that gate? Yeah, what about it? Would you mind giving me a boost? <laughs> I'm beginning to think you're a phony, Costello. If you don't get me a starring part in this studio, I'm going to tell your mother just what really happened the night you bought me that 50-cent bag of gumdrops. No, Lena, not that. Anything but that. Please don't tell her that. Your mother wouldn't like that, would she? No. She thinks those gumdrops only cost me a dime. <laughs> Lena, why don't you give up this idea for you a movie star? And Hollywood is too rough and tough for a place for a girl like you. Go back to Brooklyn. They can use a good third baseman. <laughs> Listen, egghead, if you don't get me that starring part, I'm going to bend your nose down till it touches your knee. I'll stick hat pins in your eyeballs. Then I'll get a hot iron and solder your ears together. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, I'll torture you. <laughs> Lena, I was only kidding. Come on in here. We'll see my director friend, Gregory Ratbiscuit. He'll do anything for a friend of mine. There's Mr. Ratbiscuit's secretary. Hey, you. Well, what is it? Uh... <laughs> I said, what is it? I give up. What is it? <laughs> Boy, tell Mr. Ratbiscuit that Luke Costello has a friend out here that he wants to star in pictures. Well, you'll just have to wait. Mr. Lawton is in there now, trying to get a friend of his in pictures. So, Mr. Lawton, you've got a friend that you want to get in pictures, eh? Everybody's got friends, nothing but friends. What am I running here, an old friend's home? I'll show you what I think of you and your friends. Now, get up! Not me. I haven't got a friend in the world. Everybody hates me. I'm all alone. What about this young woman? Oh, I never saw her before in all my life. Mm, what a beautiful creature. Uh, what a gorgeous specimen of poultry. Poach it. Spring is busting out all over. Come, pretty one. Come into my office. 
I want to discuss your possibility. Oh, Mr. Ratbisker! Costello! 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 Why did you run off without me? Well, what have you done with Lena? She's been in the office with Mr. Rat Biscuit. Huh? Whew, that must have been it. Oh, boy. <laughs> She's been in there since 3 o'clock, Abbott. I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah, that must dumb. be a terrific audition. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know Rat Biscuit is a ladies' man. Oh, do you want him to steal your girl? Go in there and get Lena. I'm afraid, Abbott. Rat Biscuit was in a terrible temper. I think he's mad at me. You coward, go in there and get Lena. Okay. Well, Costello, what happened? Oh, Lena's all right, Abbott. She's in there. And you know what, Abbott? That rat biscuit is a swell fella. What do you mean? And he, he ain't mad at me anymore. Look, he even gave me a quarter. He gave you a quarter? What for? Well, he wants me to go downtown and get him a bag of gumdrops. Uh, get him off, <laughs> <there. laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute those heroic men who wear the yellow and blue patch with the green cactus on their shoulder. The heroes of the 103rd Division, upon whose battle record is written the names of Wissenburg, Stuttgart, and Austria. In your honor, men of the 103rd Division, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Two camel shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen again next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud and Lou with the final word. Well, Costello, it's nice to be back on the air with all our old friends, you know, I hope they've all got their radios tuned into our show tonight. Well, Abbott, I know of one little radio that's tuned in down on the Lower East Side of New York, and that's at the bedside of a little pal of mine, little Johnny Stack. Come on, Johnny, get well quick. Get well for Abbott and I. I know the radio audience won't mind that we dedicated our opening show to you, Johnny. Okay. So good luck, kid. Come get on, well. Johnny. Get well, Johnny. Good night, folks. Good night to everybody. Good night, Johnny. Next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. There's many a type of pipe in the world, and they give out with many different sorts of sound. For instance, take a Navy bosun's pipe. Or the pipes in an organ. Or that sound that signals tops in contentment, the sound of a man whose pipe is loaded with rich, full-bodied, mellow Prince Albert smoking tobacco. Ah. Yes, that contented eye is the sound produced by a P.A. Pack pipe. Because not only does Prince Albert deliver wonderful flavor and fragrance, but it's gentle to your tongue as well. Even if you're a marathon pipe smoker, a special no-bite treatment takes out the tongue punishment that spoils your smoking pleasure. Prince Albert is crimp cut, too, for firm packing, easy drawing, and even burning. Switch to P.A. today. Saturday night, be sure to listen to the Prince Albert program, Grand Ole Opry, broadcast coast-to-coast coast every Saturday night on NBC. <laughs> Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes. We'll be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.